رمضان مجال الصلوات طوبى للنفس بتقواها رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 رمضان كريم 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 شهر عظيم 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 قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة تلقى السعادة تلقى النعيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم This is Islam the Natural Way bringing you inspirational presentations during the blessed month of Ramadan In today's program, Hafiz Fadil Bakas will speak to us on Ramadan, the ideal opportunity for change. First, here's a recitation from Al-Quran by Hafiz Ismail White, a former student of the GII. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanir rahim. الله يعلم ما تحمل كل أنثى وما تغيض الأرحام وما تزداد وكل شيء عنده بمقدار عالم الغيب والشهادة الكبير المتعال سواء منكم من أسر القول ومن جهر به ومن هو مستخف بالليل وسارب بالنهار له معقبات من بين يديه ومن خلفه يحفظونه من أمر الله إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم وإذا أراد الله بقوم سوءا فلا مرد له وما لهم من دونه موال صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمله ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل الله فلا هادي له وأشهر أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهر أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد We first start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We seek his assistance and we ask of his forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala From the evil of our actions and the evil of our souls Amen <coughs> The month of Ramadan is an important month for all Muslims around the world This month is a blessed month that Muslims constantly look forward to. A chance, a golden opportunity for us. Ramadan is a golden opportunity for Muslims to reflect and change and gain mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is our, an opportunity for us to better ourselves. And Ramadan is the time for change. 
The month of Ramadan requires us to better ourselves. It is an opportunity for us to change ourselves also. And due to the wisdom and the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has specified certain times and certain actions more valuable and more beloved to Him than others. And that goes for the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed many virtues and many blessings in it for us. Praying, reciting Quran, doing dhikr, you know, standing up for the tahajjud salah, any normal acts of worship that we do outside of Ramadan, when done inside of Ramadan, it, the rewards for it is increased immensely. It is multiplied for us. That is why we are encouraged, we are constantly encouraged to increase in our good deeds, to pray more, to recite more Quran, to do more adhkar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to get up in the nights and pray more, because the rewards and the virtue for doing these actions in the month of Ramadan are immense. And we won't get back this opportunity until another Ramadan. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that the Prophet ﷺ said, The five daily prayers and Friday prayer to the next Friday prayer and one Ramadan to the next Ramadan are expiation of the sins committed in between them, so long as the major sins are avoided. In this, in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that from one Ramadan to the next Ramadan, which is an entire year, someone can have their sins expiated for them. They can have their sins forgiven, so long as the major sins are avoided. Now, who are the persons that will benefit from this, from this reward? Who benefits from this expiation? They are the persons that when they come the time, they come the time of Ramadan or they come the time of Jumu'ah or they come the time, it comes the time for Salah, they are not heedless of the reward. They put in effort, they commit to the acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hoping for the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the persons who will benefit from the expiation of their sins. On the other hand, a heedless person, someone who doesn't care, or they don't put in the efforts, or they're not doing the acts of worship in these times, they will miss out on a great reward, and they will miss out on their sins being expiated. <coughs> the month of Ramadan holds a lot of virtue, including the night of Qadr, which is better than a thousand months. So we must, as Muslims, we must take advantage of this opportunity to get, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to purify ourselves. And we must use this opportunity to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before it is too late. And I would like to emphasize this point, before it is too late. Why do I say before it is too late? A lot of us know Muslims that was here with us last Ramadan that are not currently present with us this Ramadan. Some Muslims passed away just a few weeks before Ramadan, not being able to witness this blessed month, not being able to benefit from this month of Ramadan. And we should always think that we might not be able to witness the next Ramadan. We have the opportunity now. We are present in this Ramadan. We should take the opportunity, we should take the advantage, we should put in the effort in this Ramadan, in this moment, we should say, okay, let me read some extra Quran, let me stand up the nights in prayer. Just put in the effort because we do not know if we will live to see the next Ramadan. And ask, let us ask ourselves this, how many Ramadans ago did we tell ourselves and promise ourselves that, you know, come next Ramadan, I will change, I will put in an effort, I will be a better person next Ramadan. We keep telling ourselves that, you know, next Ramadan will be the Ramadan that will change my life. Next Ramadan will be, you know, I will 
I mean, the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will put in extra efforts. I will stand up all the nights. I will read out the entire Quran in Ramadan. How many Ramadan ago was that? And we are here in this Ramadan, currently in this Ramadan, and what we're telling ourselves. People with this attitude, what they're telling themselves. Inshallah, next Ramadan. They're thinking about next Ramadan, you know. I will put in more effort then. I will be a better person after that Ramadan. What about now? This is a sin. This is a trap and a deception from shaitan. This is a trap and deception from shaitan that we keep procrastinating and we keep leaving it off. And eventually what will happen to us? It will be too late. It will be our last Ramadan and we won't even know it. That is why we have the opportunity now and it's, we keep being encouraged that we have the opportunity now, make use of it. Make use of it. Change, be a better person, make up your mind that, you know, this Ramadan is going to be life-changing for me. And Ramadan can be life-changing. You have to put in the effort, you have to make the resolve to be a better person, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to increase in our faith and in our iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, chapter 2, verse 183, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون O you who have believed decreed upon you is fasting as it was decreed upon those before you so that you may attain righteousness you may attain taqwa In this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that Fasting has been prescribed on us as it was prescribed on those before us. And why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree fasting on us? Why did he make it compulsory? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the ayah, He made fasting, He decreed fasting on us so that we may attain taqwa, consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that we may attain righteousness and we may be among, from among those who are righteous. When we fast in the month of Ramadan, we are changing our daily habits. We are changing what we are normally accustomed to and it's for 30 days straight. So we are fasting for 30 days, 29 or 30 days straight. And we are changing our habits, we are staying away from that which is haram of course, but also that which is halal which is food and drink and lustful desires. And when we do this every day, we are, when we are fasting every day, we are able to control ourselves. It helps us to control our desires for that which is halal, like food and drink. And it, make, it makes it easier for us to stay away from that which is haram. One of the many virtues we can derive from fasting is the opportunity to control our nafs, to control our desires. And although food plays an integral part in our survival, oftentimes it can be used as a distraction, as a means of comfort, which often leads to us overindulging. So when we fast and we restrict our intake our, and our need for it, then we realize our attachment and it opens our eyes to the truth of this world and we realize how dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we really are. And when we are fasting and we keep away from food, drink and lustful desires and we feel hungry or we feel thirsty, we don't go and eat anything, we don't go and drink anything. We, we are reminded, we remind ourselves that I am fasting. But why are we fasting? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded it for us. And why don't we go and hide and break our fast or hide or take and eat something or drink something? It is because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know what we did. will know that we break our fast. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing us. 
And this, my brothers and sisters, helps us to develop the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It helps us to be more aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. And this is how we increase in our taqwa, our consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, When the month of Ramadan starts, the gates of heaven are opened and the gates of hell are closed, and the devils are chained. This hadith can be found in Imam Bukhari. So, looking at this hadith, as a Muslim, what better opportunity for us to try and better ourselves than when the devils are chained, that we don't have to deal with the temptations and the whispering of the shaitan, and the, the, the gates of Jannah are open, the mercy and the, the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is abundant in this month. What better opportunity do we have as Muslims to seek the forgiveness and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trying to change ourselves and be a better person, trying to get rid of our bad habits that has been making us constantly sin out of our weakness and desire, and trying to increase in our worship and our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan provides the perfect opportunity for this in every way possible. If someone who is weak in faith and is constantly and is constantly being, you know, overcome by their desires and sinning, you know, a bad habit that they have, they're constantly being overcome by it because of their weakness. And all of us have weaknesses. Such a person in the month of Ramadan, it's easier for them to break out of a bad habit. It's easier for them to change their ways so long as that person has a strong desire and resolve to better themselves and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will happen. We have to make the effort. We have to make the resolve. I want to be a better person. I want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to leave Ramadan a better person than when Ramadan reached me. This is what our mindset should be of always trying to make the most of Ramadan and being a better person with every Ramadan. Another important aspect of this is how we approach the month of Ramadan in our mind and our heart. Let us think of Ramadan when we think about the month of Ramadan. Do we think of it as a burden and a hindrance to our daily routine, to our daily habits? Do we see Ramadan as, you know, we can't wait for Ramadan to finish so that we can go back to our ways, to what we can go back to doing what we normally do? Then, if this is our attitude towards Ramadan, the most we will get of, out of our fasting is hunger and thirst. On the other hand, if we are excited for the month of Ramadan, we look forward to the month of Ramadan, and we want to gain the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are thinking that, you know, this Ramadan, I'm going to put in the extra effort. This Ramadan, I'm going to, you know, increase in my ibadah. I'm going to try and let my soul be one of the souls that are free from the hellfire in this month. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every month, Allah subhanahu, every Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees souls from the hellfire. So we should, be, we should strive and be hopeful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free our souls this Ramadan, but we have to put in the effort. The famous saying of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, in which he said, Bring yourself to account in this life before you are brought to account in the next. This is the first step to changing ourselves. Take a moment and ponder and think and reflect on our past, our current situation, our actions, you know, our mindset, our goal in life. And think, how is my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How important is my religion to me? And am I constantly striving to be a better person? We must self-evaluate in order to know what we need to change and what we need to work on. 
We must first recognize our sins and our mistakes and then seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must remember that no sins, big or small, would not be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must remember that Allah is the all-forgiving, the most merciful. And we must have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep asking for his for his forgiveness but we must be sincere we must make a resolve to change ourselves to leave all these bad habits to be a better person and we must never despair in the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an important first step is to forgive ourselves first know that we have wronged ourselves and then seek the forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this month is a time of healing and repentance which is ultimately the source of inner peace and tranquility. We are all human beings and we all make mistakes, but the best of us are those who recognize when we have wronged ourselves and we turn to Allah in repentance. We turn to Allah in sincere repentance and we seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is another hadith of the Prophet that while he was ascending the pulpit, he said Amin three times. And the companions, this was not something, this was something unusual for them. So after the companions inquired, O oh Prophet, why did you say Amin three times? To which the Prophet وسلم, explained that Angel Jibreel came to him and said three things to him, to which he replied Amin. And of these three things, the Prophet وسلم, said, Angel Jibreel said, If Ramadan comes and a person is not forgiven, he will enter hell and Allah will cast him far away. Say, Ameen. To which the Prophet ﷺ replied, Ameen. In Ramadan, it is so easy to gain the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if a person does not gain the forgiveness of Allah, then such a person is arrogant and rejecting the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not seeking the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, such a person who does not seek the forgiveness or the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, such a person is doomed to the hellfire. I implore all of my Muslims, my Muslim brothers and sisters, take opportunity of the month of Ramadan while we can. Even through the slightest effort, we can gain immense reward and maybe even change ourselves. We should have a plan every single Ramadan. When we sit and reflect and evaluate ourselves, we should make a plan trying to rid ourselves of bad habits or even just to increase in some form of ibadah trying to add something more to our daily lives, be it reading more Qur'an or praying in the night. Try to develop a new habit that we can continue out of Ramadan than when we reached it. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all our sins, accept from us our efforts and fasting this Ramadan, and grant us the highest stations in Jannah. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk until tomorrow assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh رمضان صيام ودعاء رمضان أمان وصفاء رمضان صيام ودعاء رمضان أمان وصفاء رمضان سلوك وعطاء أهلا بقدومك يا رمضان Thank you.
قم للعبادة تلقى السعادة تلقى السعادة تلقى